Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at CMA EAs in Python. And so you're probably wondering what that is. Well, this is a covariance matrix adaptation evolution strategy, and it's used for numerical optimization. So if we dive into that a bit. So the first thing is the evolution strategy. So it's a way of taking some kind of population and evolving it in each generation so that it becomes better. And the reason it's a covariance matrix adaptation is because you have a covariance matrix which represents your current population and then you adapt it at each step to go into a new population. So we'll have a look at this example. So the first time it randomly generates numbers over here and um, it is trying to get them as close to here as possible. And you can see it learns in the second generation, you know, maybe the center needs to be closer to here. So it expands it and then looks over here as well. And then it realizes, you know, they need to be even closer to here. And now it's starting to see, you know, this is the optimal solution. And so it starts shrinking this distribution. And then it just gets closer and closer in the next two generations. And you're probably wondering, you know, what this uh, dashed line is. And that's just a representation of the distribution. So this is all based on the normal distribution. So you've got this ellipsoid shape, which represents where it expects points to lie. And the mass behind it is extremely complicated. But the idea is that it just updates each time to get closer to the goal. And you can see this other example where you can see these kind of circles represent how good the answer is. Um, and then the targets are these two stars. And you can see it just chooses to go towards this star. So it's not very good at going to two separate goals, because then it would have some kind of ellipsoid that looks like that, and there'd be loads of stuff in the middle, which wouldn't be very good. So the first thing we need to do, if we want to use CMAES, is install it, and we can just do if install CMAES. And you can see I've already got it installed. So what we're going to need is from CMA years is CMA, which is your covariance matrix adaptation. We're also going to need NumPy. And you can see here that it depends on NumPy. Uh, so it's no surprise that we need that. And I guess the first thing we should do is have some kind of target. So um, we start and just say the target is on the a numpy array where it's 0 0.75, 0 0.75, it's just two values. And we're going to define this evaluate function. Where we're taking a point and we want to work out the distance that the point is from here. So to do this, I think the best way is we take the square root of the point minus the target squared and then we take the sum. So we're just subtracting them and then finding the sum. So this is just Pythagoras theorem. Uh, we also need an optimizer if we're going to have a generation. And we'll set it to CMA. And we'll say that the mean, we're going to start off in the center. And we're going to limit the values between 0 and 1. So the mean will be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And our bounds. We want it to be more than one or, le or less than zero. Uh, zero, one, zero, one. So that's saying the first value can be between zero and one, and the second value can be between zero and one. And here it's saying that the first value has a mean initially of 0 0.5, and the second value has a mean of 0 0.5. The balance isn't required, but the required argument is sigma, and we're going to set it to 0 0.5. And if you know much about the normal distribution, you'll understand that sigma is the uh, standard deviation and it's how far the original values are going to be from the mean. So sigma 0 0.5 means 68% of values are going to be between 0 and 1. And you, that's quite low. So what we're also going to do is set this n max resampling equal to 1. So that means if it generates the value 1.2, then what it usually does is it then just regenerates new and whole new values. 
but if we set this equal to 1 that means it will just convert that 1.2 to 1 and it will basically trim it so that it fits within the bounds. And first we should just call the optimizer and see what the initial points are. So if we just say optimizer.ask and we'll just print this and you can see the optimizer.ask and we'll also print the optimizer. And so you can see immediately it says a list has no attribute shape and that's because this needs to be a numpy array and because it's using this shape function it can't uh, call it on a tuple and so we've got this CMA object and the first values it generates are 0 0.78 and 1 and if we run it again you know it's generated different values So this actually, optimizer actually has a population size. So what we can do is we can say for i in range optimizer dot population size, we can print optimizer ask, and you can see you know this one has picked six values for its population, and that's because it's trying to optimize these. Uh, two values and so it thinks the ideal population size is six We could also do is say that you know our point is the optimized to ask we can print the point and Evaluate the point So you can see The evaluate ranges from this high one of 0.57 to almost zero so it's almost hit it perfectly first time So if we're going to improve our optimizer, we're going to have some generations. So say for G in range generations. And we're just going to start with generations equal to 2. Just so that we can do it twice and kind of see what happens. And we actually need to save what we're evaluating. So what we'll say is that's the point, and the score is going to be equal to evaluate a point. So we can just print the point and the score. And we could add them all up and work out the average, but we're just going to eye it for now. And we also need to save this solutions list. So the solutions are equal to this. And this is how good the thing it's guessing is. And then you need to put into this solutions array the point and the score. So maybe here we can just print the solutions. And then we need to tell the optimizer what the solutions are. So we use this tell solutions. And you can see that when we want a point, we ask, and then at the end we tell it the solutions. And here this needs to be append. And so you can see, so for the first generation, is guessed all these different points and we can see that you know this one scored 0 0.5 almost 0 0.5 just uh, almost 0 0.6 0 0.2 0 0.25 0 0.8 and then the second time it's gone 0 0.4 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.25 so the average has definitely decreased and if we do this for example for 10 generations and then we can see, you know, by the end, the distance is very, very small. So what if we want to visualize it? Um, well, I guess we could either use Seaborn or Matplotlib. And because Matplotlib is easier, we can just use uh, Matplotlib. So we'll import PyPlot. I'm going to set the generations equal to 16, it's a square number, and have this square root variable, which is going to be equal to the square root of the generations, so that we can basically view it as a square. Um, we're going to put each set in a different one, so we'll say we have some subplots, and they're going to be square root by square root, so that we end up with this square 
of the generations in size. We're going to call it CMA ES, and these are all going to share X and share Y so that we can see them relative because otherwise it will zoom in towards the end ones and it won't look like they've made any progress. We should also save the points. So what we'll have is an, an n dimensional array and the shape is going to be generations. So we have one row for each generation and then we have the optimizer dot population size. So we have n or however many there are on the population many points and two because each point is two values an x and a y and then of course we need to save the point somewhere so here we can say point g point gi so the generation which matches here and the population size is equal to point and point is a numpy array, so we don't have any issues about needing to convert uh, lists or tuples. And then at the end, we'll say for i in range generations. So our axes are going to be i divided by the square root, i mod the square root. So as i increases, this is going to increase, so 0, 1, 2, 3. And then when it gets to 4, which is the square root of 16, this is going to increase and this is going to go back to zero. So we'll just go across and down like that. And we want to put a scatter plot. And we need to convert the points into this kind of x, comma, y. Uh, and the best way to do this is using a zip object that we spill with points i. So what this does is it goes through all the points uh, and basically transposes them. And we'll set the color equal to blue. We're also going to scatter the target that we can see where the target is. Of course it's not going to change. And we also want to set the x limit to 0, 1 and do the same for the y limit so that it's all scaled. And of course at the end once we get to show our plot. And so I mean first we can see there's there's an issue here. And it says the array is one dimensional, but two were indexed. So this is because this should say points. And uh, we can see it's working. So if I zoom in, you can see first it's kind of just generated a bunch of random points. And then it's generated, you know, they look slightly close. It's hard to tell. And then here, then, I don't know, maybe they're getting closer. I guess because these were so far apart, it's struggling to get closer. And then here, you know, it's gradually making progress until kind of about here, it, it cracks it, it realizes, you know, the point's there. And then they just get closer and closer until after 16 generations, they've made it. So you can see we've used the optimizer to create this diagram showing how, over time, it's optimized the population. And this is just a 2D example. But you can do this with hundreds of dimensions. And because of the way it works, it's far less computationally heavy than other optimization methods, such as a search. It's kind of an extension of a genetic algorithm, but it's really great for solving minimization problems. And if you want to solve maximization problems, you can just take the reciprocal. It doesn't work with negative numbers, but it is a really useful tool. So hopefully you've seen how it works, and you can use it in your own projects in the future. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again same time next week. Till then.